Hi guys, hope you're all staying safe. Um, it's week four of all this lockdown. Everybody's getting a bit bored now, but as you've seen, the guys at Fox Rage have all been doing a, um, a Q&A session. Uh, some great ones already from Chris, from um, Jason, and, uh, and also from Craig, Craig on the Pike. So um, today's my turn, and I'll be answering all your questions on uh, my competition fishing and reservoir fishing. So uh, let's go and have a look and see what the first question is. And the first one comes from Paul Bickley. Hi Paul. Um, for somebody who's never done competition fishing, what would you say is the biggest difference between that and pleasure fishing? Well, obviously first of all it's competition. So um, you know, you're know you out there to try to beat everybody else, uh, which is obviously pretty obvious. but with that brings you know a lot of um a lot of stress to your fishing you've got to um look after your times so time management is very very important when you go pleasure fishing you can roll up whenever you like go and have a little experiment you know try various places jump venues etc etc um when you're competition fishing your venue is obviously dictated to you um from my experience to be consistent your best sort of um, tool in your armory is practice. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. Um, loads of practice, loads of research, understanding where certain fish are on a venue at certain times of the day, in certain weather conditions, um, and then obviously how you're going to target them and, and catch them. Um, you've then also got the added stress of people fishing where you want to be fishing. So you've always got to have a bit of a backup plan or you've got to be able to um, to change change your plan and and adapt to the day and adapt to the situation. Um, so the biggest difference for me really is the stress levels. Um, you know, it, it it's very stressful competition fishing. Um, I do enjoy it. I love it. Um, nowadays I do a lot of competition fishing, which is um, on boats and it's it, uh, as a partnership. So uh, myself and my regular partner Tom. Um, you know, we sort of share the stress. When there's two of you there, you can bounce ideas off each other, and you can you can sort of really work to that one goal of, of beating everybody else. Um, I think me and Tom have a really good way of doing that, um, and that helps to keep the stress levels down sometimes. But certainly, competitions when you've got a live leaderboard, which is becoming a lot more popular now um, on various apps, etc. If you're keeping an eye on the leaderboard as well as fishing, um, obviously that, that really does heighten the stress levels because um, you can see that you're winning or you can see you're last or you can see that you need two more fish. Um, you know, it, it, it heightens the competition. It makes it very, very, very exciting. Um, but yeah, very, very stressful. So um, that's what I would say is my biggest difference um, between, between competition and fishing and pleasure fishing is, um, is the stress levels. Next up, we've got uh, Oliver Vallis, um, and Oliver asks, in a competition, do you tend to change tactics much, or do you just stick with what you planned as the main tactic, even if it's not working? Uh, very good question. We always go to a competition with, with a plan, a plan of attack. Um, sometimes that plan will obviously work, and brilliant. Other times the plan won't work for various reasons. Um, whether somebody fishing where you want to be fishing, um, the fish just aren't there, they're not feeding, loads and loads of things. So uh, I've used both to our advantage or to my advantage. Sometimes I've got a plan and the plan is knowing exactly when there's going to be fish at a certain area at a certain time of day. Um, but to ensure that you get to fish that area, sometimes you've got to just go and stick your guns out and fish it for the whole competition, just knowing that they are there and it is going to happen. Um, to be able to do this, you've got to obviously put the practice in to be able to be confident enough to sit in one spot all day, not getting a bite, not getting a touch, but knowing that they are there or they will be there. And when that bite comes, that's what you need to be able to win the competition. Um, likewise, it's also worked in the completely opposite way. I've stuck to my guns, been out and blanked or been out and caught very little and somebody's walked for miles or they've been out in the boat to the other end of the reservoir, other end of the canal, wherever, and, um, and they've bagged up. 
it's you know it's the luck of the draw it's um you've, you've either got stitch your guns or change them and to be honest the the answer to that question is it changes every every time you can never ever ever really stick to your guns i remember one distinct time boat fishing a competition uh, myself and tom we stuck to our guns all day uh fished one certain area knowing that there was a lot of fish that should be there should be feeding um we fished it fished it fished it we actually blanked that day didn't catch at all it was a two-day competition um the following day uh some other good friends of ours fished that area for pretty much the whole day and they caught a shed load um the fish moved in and on day two we decided to change our tactics went and fished another area that we're very very confident in uh, we did catch there but not the numbers we needed and not the numbers we needed to be able to win the competition so we lost out that day so um yeah in, in answer to that question it, it's very difficult to say whether you would stick to a plan or change it um, you've just got to be able to adapt to the situation and the day Okay, next up we've got uh, we've got Tom Hunt. So a good friend of mine, Tom. Hi, Tom. Um, what's the next big tournament you'd like to win? Well, first of all, as most competition anglers would know, the next tournament I want to win is the next one I enter. Um, we've got to have that passion to be able to go out and, and want to win, otherwise we wouldn't do it. Um, but the next big tournament, probably being a partner with yourself, Tom, would be the UK edition of the WPC. Um, we finished a very, very close third last year, but a brilliant fight, as you know, and um, yeah, this year should be our year, so fingers crossed. That's the WPC England qualifier. So next up, we've got uh, another question from Oliver Vallis, and Oliver asks, um, do you fish small lures on reservoirs or focus on larger lures? Uh, it's a good question. It depends where I'm fishing and it depends what I'm fishing for. Um, I would normally start bigger and work my way down. So I'm looking for the aggressive fish first and the active moving type, you know, feeding fish. Um, so prime example, there's a reservoir or two that if I was perch fishing, I would start off on a 12 centimeter Xander Pro. Um, that seems like a, a very big, big bait or big lure, but these are big fish and they're feeding on big fish as well. You know, they're feeding on four, five, six centimetre um, uh, roach as well as the smaller fish. But, you know, there's a lot of bait fish in these big reservoirs and, um, you know, they will eat fish of all sizes. So I would always go in and start bigger and work my way down. I mean, if I was going onto, um, onto a river or summer, there's every chance I might only start on a sort of eight or 10 centimetre bait instead, um, just bringing that size down slightly. But again, as the day wears on, or if the fish aren't aggressive enough, then I drop down to, to smaller sizes and less aggressive patterns, and more like the slick shad, um, which has got a, a much sleeker profile and nowhere near as aggressive body roll. Um, I've been known to fish on water such as Grafham, with the tiny little seven centimeter slick shad or the tiny little um, six centimeter spiky shad in 40 foot of water, 50 foot of water. Um, it all depends what they want on the day and it depends what bait fish you're, you're um, fishing around. So um, sometimes, particularly at the start of the season, um, you know, you might be fishing with very, very small baits um, just as there's a lot of smaller fry about, but as those fry develop and they start to grow and they're bigger fish, um, then the fish will be targeting or obviously eating, eating bigger fish. And likewise, as the, as the bait shoals dwindle, the numbers are getting smaller, but the fish are getting bigger. So, um, so those prey fish are, are you know, they're, they're coming in or those predators are coming in and feeding on much, much bigger, bigger bait fish now. So um, it all depends on the time of the year, how they're feeding, and what they're feeding on um, but for me personally start bigger and work your way down it's more like um, starting aggressive and working down to, to your negative fishing you know like your Ned rig style sort of dragging baits across the bottom um, they all work and and they've all got their place even on the big reservoirs um, they've all they've all got their place likewise don't ignore plugs or spinners or 
crankbaits. Um, because a water's 40 or 50 foot deep, there's nothing to say those fish are going to be in that bottom couple of foot, um, particularly the perch. You know, we've seen perch up and feeding, certainly in the top 10 foot of the water, in, in maybe 40 or 50 foot of water. Um, you can quite often get a follow from a perch right up to the boat. And do you believe that perch has come all the way up from 40 or 50 foot to follow your bait? I don't think so myself. I think it's um, been milling up in the water column somewhere. It's seen it coming past and, and you've got to follow in. So don't ignore um, the, the different depths in the water column. And to be able to do that means you've got to change the size of your bait or your bait presentation. So certainly don't ignore fishing up in the water with big or with smaller baits. I hope that helps. Next up, we got uh, Stephen Grange. Hi Stephen. Stephen asks, on the big reservoirs, what are your thoughts on bringing Xander up from depth? Do you think it's dangerous for them or can they survive it? Right then, um, it's not really a debate I want to get into, um, into right at the moment, but my uh, opinion on it is Xander are buggers. Full stop. I've watched Xander being caught in 10 foot of water. Um, good Xander, double figure Xander, go back, no problem at all. Uh, only for three, four hours later in the day for us to find said Xander popped up. Um, there's no, there was no barrel trauma, there's no signs of stress. The fish has gone back very, very strong and healthy. And yet a couple of hours later, we found the fish dead. Uh, it was definitely the same fish. Uh, it was handled with utmost care and respect. Um, it was kept out of the water for minimal time. And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's not nice to see, and it's not something that we want to um, that, that we want to practice really. However, I don't. Um, I, I'm not convinced that, <laughs> that particularly the depth um, is the be all and end all. There's a lot of factors to it. Um, I think Xander are just very finicky when it comes to actually um, going back. They don't like being caught, and they don't like going back. Um, I used to target a lot of Xander on deep waters like Rutland. Um, I've watched them on the fish finder go back down to the bottom, even fish showing signs of barotrauma. However, do they survive? I don't know. Um, I don't know, and my um, take on that now is I do a lot, lot less than the fishing on the reservoirs. I'd much rather go onto the river where they seem to go back better. But again, because of the way they're that finicky, do they go back better? or do they just end up further downstream? I honestly really don't know. Um, I think it's down to everybody's opinion and um, that it's their own option whether they want to go and fish for these fish in, in these depths of water. Um, I do till, still target some. Um, I don't do anywhere near as much as I used to do. I don't believe they all go back, uh, but likewise, I don't believe they all die. So it's a bit, um, it's a bit of a dangerous sort of area to be chatting about and um, yeah I just leave that one there that I'm not 100% sure if they go back really well and as a result I don't don't target loads from now but I still do target a few. Okay next up we've got Rick Collins. Hi Rick and Rick asks what's the best big reservoir you fish and the best day you've ever had on one? Okay well um there's obviously limited big reservoirs in the UK. Um, a lot of people know um, about the potential in the fishing in a lot of them, but by far my best and my personal preference is for Grafham. Um, so relatively big water, um, reasonably deep 50 odd foot in places, but a lot of shallower water, 10, 12 foot, quite a lot of features to target, lots of drop offs, lots of shelves. Um, a diverse amount of fish, you know, you've got the trout for the trout anglers, both rainbow and brown trout. Um, you've got some phenomenal Xander, um, not that I seem to be able to catch them by design in there, they seem to ev evade me. Um, there's some awesome pike, uh, but I don't do a lot of pike fishing. Primarily, I go there for the perch fishing. Um, I love it, and I think it's getting better and better. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's just a, a great, great water. It's one I don't mind naming because, um, like I say, most people know about it. And as far as um, what's the best day I've had on there, uh, I shared a phenomenal day with, with a really good friend of mine, Matt. Um, 
We fished most of the morning for Xander, bumped one or two, didn't do very well. Um, I must admit, it's a bit of a bogey water for me when it comes to actually um, catching Xander by design. Uh, go to Rutland, I can catch them all day long, but uh, Grafham, by design, not really. Uh, they, they do drive me mad, but by about lunchtime, we basically didn't have a fish on the board. And we moved to a different area. We had a couple of perch, um, and then I started casting about for the pike with a much bigger bait, 14 centimeter, um, our pink candy uh, Xander Pro, and I had a hit straight away, straight, ret straight retrieve, mid water, and, uh, and it was a perch, three pound perch. Brilliant, so fired it straight back out, and I had another one, and another one, and another one. So maps then changed color, 14 centimeters and the pro and another one and another one and we were catching 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 so interestingly that day I uh, we, uh, we didn't have a fish under two pound uh, we didn't have a fish over about three pound four three pound five they were all sort of peas in a pod high twos low threes um, between about 44 and 46 centimeters uh, we had 30 to 40 in the end um, lost count it was just a phenomenal two hours fishing, uh, as I said, we blanked all morning, stumbled on these fish on the finder, uh, caught a few, um, but what was interesting that day is because we were catching, I started to play about with my lures. So I dropped down in lure size, uh, kept with the same color and struggled to get a bite. As Soon as I came back up to, to a 14 centimeter, irrespective of color, I was getting a lot of bites again. So that, they sort of showed me that when they are on it and when they're aggressive, that's what they want. They didn't want a small bait. They wanted that big 14 centimeter. They wanted it fast. They didn't care what color it was. Um, as soon as we slowed things up or as soon as we moved um, the bait size down slightly or fished closer to the bottom, then, then they weren't interested or we were getting much, much fewer, um, fewer bites. So yeah. The best day I ever had was there, and uh, yeah, it was really nice to share it with Matt. And we, we had 30 to 40 good perch. Um, I think incidentally Matt had a, had a 20 pound pike near the end of the day as well. So brilliant day all round. Okay, so now we've got one from Gez Fletcher. What's your favorite type of venue to compete on? Well, as you've probably, um, probably heard me banging on about the reservoirs, I love the reservoir fishing. Uh, I like the big body of water. I think they're brilliant competition venues. Uh, they're open for everybody to be able to go and practice. Um, there's a various skill set that's needed for your boat handling, your um, obviously fish location, your fish finder skills. Um, there's a whole different mindset there. It's something that I've been um, doing a lot more of over the last few years. It's something I'm now getting quite tuned into. Can't wait to sort of break into the more European competitions uh, again with Tom. Um, yeah, I just I just love it. I love that being out on the boat, being out on the water. Um, you get people saying the fish finders are, are you know, taking away your, um, your watercraft skills. I mean, it's a load of rubbish. It takes years to, to be able to understand the fish finder properly. Um, I certainly don't fully understand them now. Um, as the technology is getting better, you need to understand them better to really get your money's worth from those um, those bits of kit. Uh, likewise, you've got the competition anglers that fish in the canals. They would wipe the floor with me. Um, they're used to all this little dibbling down the inside and a lot more refined techniques um, and each their own. But yeah, for me, without a shadow of a doubt, get out in the reservoirs, big competitions, lots of fun. Um, close to the water and just, yeah, just love being out there on the boat. So without a doubt, definitely the reservoirs. So next up, we've got one from uh, Chris Salis. Hi, Chris. Chris asks, how much preparation goes into a day of competition fishing and, what, and what's the most important thing in your experience to prepare that would give you the edge? Okay, um, practice. As I sort of said earlier, practice, practice, practice. Um, this comes in various forms of um, giving you an edge. So there's competitions I've fished where we've been and practiced and we've barely caught. But that practice has ruled out areas as much as, um, as given us areas to fish. 
So your, your practice time you've got to use obviously as best as you can. Um, that is where most of my preparation goes into is, is into the practice and like I say that can be a successful practice or not successful practice as far as catching fish goes but either way any time spent on the water or any time spent on the bank is, is good practice and that's where most of my preparation goes. However when you're out on the boat or, or bank fishing for that matter you need to ensure that you've got everything you need for that competition in your bag or bags um, it needs to be neat tidy accessible um, speed is the key in competition so you don't want to be rummaging through your bag looking for a certain lure or a certain trace you want to know that you can open a bag up go into a pocket and your trace materials there you can tie a new trace straight on or your certain lures there or your jig heads are all in a box so you've got if you want to swap from 10 grams to 15 grams to 20 grams you can do it straight away um, so all of your kit needs to be prepared when it comes to um, the boats obviously you've got to make sure all the fish finders are all working the electric motors are working you've got batteries for them all you've got backup batteries for them all um, you've got warm clothes waterproof clothes particularly out in the reservoirs um, you know it can be bright sunny and you'll still get soaking wet if there's a little bit of a wind up um, so the preparation goes to everything really um, and the preparation now for these bigger competitions weekend competitions is even more because you're going to stay away so you need to make sure that you've got everything you need um, for me being out on a boat in a boat competition i like to have multiples of the same bait so certainly soft plastics i'd like to have three of each size of each color of the type of lure that i'm expecting to use um, it might sound excessive but you can generally expect to lose a lure or two during the day and we're fishing for predators so if they're on it those lures are going to get ripped to shreds and um, we've certainly had you know we've had perch ripping lures, lures to shreds because you're getting that many hits um, pike they will just decimate a lure in no time um, you know if they get it in the right place so if you're catching consistently and then suddenly you've lost that lure or that lure has been chewed to bits that is no longer presentable what do you do do you stop catching do you change color um, do you lose your, your catch rate hopefully you've got another spare one in the bag put it on and you're away so my preparation is making sure that I've got everything I need enough of everything I need and that it's all clean, tidy and organised and I've done as much practice as I possibly can beforehand. I hope that helps. So next up we've got uh, Rich Chalmers. Rich asks, what's the biggest tip you can give someone fishing a competition for the first time? Uh, okay then Rich, I've sort of covered this really, um, but Practice, preparation, uh, that's the key, is, is be at the venue early, um, don't be rushing about last minute, make sure you're there, you've got everything ready, just make sure you've got everything organised, um, you don't want to be running back to the car to get bits or you don't want to be you know, bringing the boat back in to get bits, you're, you're wasting time, so make sure your kit's organised, do as much pre-fishing as, as you possibly can, if you can't do any pre-fishing, do as much research as you can. Get onto Google Earth, have a look at the venue, have a look at the features, find somewhere that you think, oh, I've never seen this place before, that looks like a hotspot, let's sort of get there first, have a little try, suss the place out. So do as much preparation as possible just to give you um, as much insight to that water as possible. So I know most of my reservoirs now, so I don't need to do that, but I do need to go and do my preparation and I, the fish aren't going to be in the same places all the time. So again it's just preparation the biggest tip i can give you is just be prepared um pretty much for every every eventuality you know that that comes up so yeah be prepared and the last question we've got up here is uh one from james cole hi james james asks What's the best result you've ever had in a fishing competition and how hard was it to achieve? Okay, well I was only discussing this one yesterday actually with Tom and um, the best result I feel that we've ever had was myself, um, uh, my good fishing partner Tom 
and also Mike, Mike McGuire. Um, we went over to Holland, to Rotterdam, to compete in the Gunky Iron Tournament. Um, I fished it two years prior to that, so 2016, I think, from memory. So we're getting a bit hazy now. Um, where I went over with Mike and with Jason, I'd never seen the place, I'd done loads of research on Google Earth, um, Google Maps, contacting as many um, local anglers over there as I could that I could get away with to get as much information as possible. Uh, we went over that year, had a fantastic time, weather was brilliant, freezing at night, there was a good six or seven English teams over there as well, so we had a real good banter and um, it was good fun. We caught fish, almost straight away I had a 45 centimetre 45 centimetre perch really early on give us some high hopes um, but to be honest as the day wore on as the 24 hour competition wore on we started to struggle we started to lose a lot of kit um, it got very difficult but there was 80 teams that year and we finished 41st so just slightly past halfway um, so really pleased I never fished it the following year uh, then there was a year it's cancelled and there was a year that Tom fished it. Then we all went back, myself, Tom and Mike, and um, we went over a day early, back to the preparation. Got some preparation done, done a bit of pre-fishing, uh, we caught a few perch, nothing big, sort of 30 centimetres. Um, but what we did do is we spent a whole day ruling out areas. I mean. For those of you that don't know, Rotterdam's a big city, there's loads of water. You can fish the main river and a lot of the side carriers and the small canals, marinas, harbours. Everything looks fishy, um, but there's huge, huge, huge areas to discount. And we pretty much spent the whole day discounting areas um, because we just purely couldn't catch fish, couldn't get bites. Um, so that sort of narrowed it down to one area where we had caught quite a few smaller perch um, but as they changed the rules slightly for this year and it was a bit more of a game there was lots of smaller things so there was your top five fish uh, the most numbers of fish uh, different species and then various other games thrown in between um, we felt it was a good place to start so we popped back to that area just to just to see I had a cast and I got bitten off straight away um, soft plastic single hooks are not too stressed uh, but what we then decided was there's a feeding pipe there let's leave that till tomorrow and come and see if we can um, if, we, if we can catch in the competition so uh, yeah finished the day up went back to our rooms finished all our prep up everything was ready upright and breezy registered um, it's a big competition a lot of hype um, really really good fun anglers from all over the world um, so whistle blows, everybody leaves, we get straight to our spot, we're the first first team there which was brilliant, um, very first cast, I've gone straight into the weeds, couldn't believe it, I was very nervous, jittery, it was all exciting and uh, second cast, bang, we put a wire trace on this time I must add, um, second cast, bang, 84 centimetre pike um, within seconds of the competition starting, so brilliant start. Um, got it measured, got some pictures, etc. Got it, got it registered. It's a live leaderboard as well, so the excitement sort of builds as the day goes on. Um, proceeded to carry on fishing and catching quite a few perch and on pike gear really. So I said to Tom, you've got to get in here and start catching. And this is the, the good thing with teamwork is Tom is like, no, you, you're getting them at the moment. You stay exactly there, you keep catching get the fish back to me, I'll get them um, measured and registered. And there was actually pretty much two of us fishing, myself and Mike, Tom a bit in between for the first hour, and um, we put quite a lot of fish on the board in that first hour. Um, and that was because of teamwork. Then all three of us started catching, and we were catching consistently, and we were now having fun in a competition. So we fished like that most of the day. We caught some brilliant perch up to 45 centimetres. Uh, the minimum that was allowed was 10 centimetres. Admittedly, we had quite a few smaller fish as well. Um, we'd caught the pike and uh, yeah, we was, we was having fun. So the end of day one, we were leading. Um, brilliant. Day two comes, uh, just stick to the same plan. Went straight back to the same spot, got there, I started fishing, I couldn't get a bite. And we was like, hmm. And we carried on fishing and another team up kept turned up can't remember where they were from 
they fished just slightly down from us and then they caught uh, two eyed almost straight away and, and big ones you know 50 centimeter sort of size um, so this was a bit concerning now we physically hadn't had a bite uh, the day before we caught pike and lots of perch so as the weather sort of changed Tom and Mike came into their own then um, and started fishing a lot smaller their canal fishing experience really kicked in and their finesse stuff they started fishing a lot lot smaller and started consistently catching perch 10 to 30 centimeters uh, no no huge fish really but all, all qualifying fish so uh, long and short of it yeah they pretty much pulled it out of the bag for us on day two we all contributed um, which again is what teamwork's all about and yeah we were we were the vic victorious team so being crowned the winners of, of the Gunky Iron tournament um, with two really good fishing mates is, is fantastic so that is by far my best fishing achievement um, or competition achievement I do believe we're probably the only UK team sole UK team to go over to um, a European competition like that and uh, and come back as the winners um, I'd love to try and do it again unfortunately it's not running at the moment but next step is to move up to the some of the bigger uh, boat competitions um, but that's a mega learning curve I mean I've got a lot to learn and um, and a few quid to find before we can get there but Hopefully, um, hopefully, yeah, that answers the question that that's the, the Iron Tournament was our best ever result. It was fantastic. Okay, well, I forgot to mention that um, from all these questions, I get to pick one lucky winner who will uh, receive some lures from, uh, from the Fox Rage. So um, I'd like to pick uh, Oliver, Oliver Vallis for your question being... Um, in a competition, do you tend to change tactics much or do you stick to what you've planned uh, if the main tactic's not working? As, um, as that, you know, the answer to that can really make or break your day. So, so yeah, well done Oliver and uh, get, your, um, get your email address to us and we'll get you some of those in the post. Cheers, take care.